You have several textures for the same object in your game, and you want to use them all? In this video, I will teach you how to variate textures in Godot without having to create standalone scenes for every single one of them. It's eyes and let's get to it. So here we are in Godot and let's see what we have. Here is a note to the scene code Godot body and it has a sprite child. Godot body has a script that just reloads the scene whenever we press the escape key. And the sprite itself, it just has a ready method that calls the very texture method that we have yet to write. So, there are two ways we can implement random texture variations in God. None of them is better than the other. There are situations where you might want to use the first method and when you might want to use the second better. It all depends on the context. And I will cover both of them. So, method 1. For this method, we will use separate PNG files. Each of them represents one texture variation. There will be an array of textures out of which a random one will be chosen and set as a sprite's texture. In order to do that, go right to the code. We will need to create a variable, texture variations array of the texture type, and it will contain all the texture variations that we want our sprite to have. Now in the variate texture method, write this. First you check if the size of the array is bigger than 1, because otherwise there is no point in randomly setting a texture. Then we generate a random number in the range from 0 to the array size. We pick a texture from the array using this ID and then we just set the texture to the chosen texture. Now, to show that it works, here is our array, as you can see it, all, it is all set up. Let's turn off the texture and launch the game. And as you can see it sets up. I press escape and it picks a random texture out of the three. Oh, that was pretty easy, and that's it for the method first. I will tell more about its advantages and disadvantages later in the video. Method 2. For this method we will use a tile set with all the texture variations in it. This method requires that all the textures to be placed in one row or one column, and the distance between them must stay the same, because it's a tile set. Also what's convenient, you don't have to have a separate file for this tile set. It can be a part of the tile set of your whole game with all the sprites in it, as long as all the texture variations are placed in order. So, for the texture, set up the file called variation tile set, and now set up the region. Set it to enabled, and here in the texture region tab, set the step to 32 by 32, or whatever your sprite size is, and pick the very first one. Save it. Now to the code. We will need to create two variables. Texture variations amount and texture width, or texture height, if for some reason your sprites are placed vertically. And in the variate texture method, write this. If texture variations amount is bigger than 1, then get a random number of skips, in range from 0 to the texture variations amount, and then add skips multiplied by texture width to our region rect position. So in other words, this rectangle will just move like this. I, I think it should be updated now. Yeah, as you can see. And let's test it. As you can see, it works just as well. And that's it for the method 2. Now you know two ways of randomly variating textures of sprites in Godot. You may ask which method is the best. And as I said, it depends on what you're using it for. For instance, in my game Barking Irons, all the textures are in the same tile set. So I use the second method, and it's very convenient. On the other hand, method 1 is more automated. All you just have to do is to append all the textures in the array, and a random one of them will be picked. It means that if you have PNG files of different sizes, you can still use them. Briefly, if you have a vast tile set with all the textures in it, you can use method 2, which requires a little bit of setup. However, if you want to automate everything and be as precise as possible, go for the method 1. And that's it. By the way, I am a co-organizer of GoGodoGem, and this tutorial is a part of my contribution to it. If you want to level up your Godot skills, meet passionate game developers, and enjoy the comfort of our friendly community of hundreds of people, I invite you to join us on gogodogm.com. 
This video is sponsored by the kind people who have donated money for this event. The donations are split between Godo, the winners of the jam, and the contributors like me. If you want to give Godo and its community a huge boost and encourage content creators to make more content on it, it's high time to donate. And that's it. I hope that video was helpful and you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It was Ives and until next time.